You know, in my channel, I talk so much about doing the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it, to self-improve, to always increase your knowledge, your skills, your fortitude, your tenacity, so much so that I actually had an epiphany today. What if I talked about the what ifs? What if you chose not to self-improve? What if you decided not to work out? What if you decided that you're completely happy where you're at and that there was no reason to increase your skill set whatsoever? And after all, it is a valid point because there needs to be an incentive. There needs to be a reason for why we do the hard work. I mean, if we can avoid it, why not? And I actually thought this was such a great question that I want to make a video about it. Why do we have to self-improve? And I want to give you a perspective. Let's say you're overweight, you've been bullied most of your life, you have very little self-worth, you know a lot of people deep down do not respect you, you have lived life this way for years. You see one person who's similar to you, you see that they start to work out, they start to slowly read more books about human psychology, they slowly try to go outside their comfort zone in order to improve all those things, but you decided it wasn't for you. Here's the thing, in a way, it's not going to get that much worse for you. Because this is your normal. You are used to getting bullied. You're used to being seen with no respect. You're used to all the negative detriments. And when you're used to something for so long, it becomes your normal. So in a way, props off to you because the low is already established. It's not going to get much more lower than that. But here's the thing, and this is the true tragedy behind you making an active choice not to self-improve. You're not going to notice anything changing within the days or weeks or months. Neither are the people who are going to self-improve. They're not going to just get those changes tomorrow, next week, next month, so on and so on. That's the reality. But as the years pass by, you will begin to notice a tremendous difference between the lives of these individuals. The person who might have started the exact same, overweight, low self-esteem, had little self-worth, but decided to work out, push themselves outside their comfort zone, accumulate as much knowledge as they possibly could, they're going to live a very different life than the person who decides to stay that way. And the thing is, you're never going to know what it's like to be on the other side unless you do the hard work. It is only the person who has been both overweight, in poor health, and someone who's been athletic, in great athletic shape. That is the person who knows what it's like to experience the worst of the detriments and the best of the benefits. But because you never gave yourself that chance, you're never going to feel what it's like to be on the other side. So at best, you are left wondering what your life could be, what it could have been. And at worst, you will look at other people who do have that life and you will look at them with resentment, with anger, with jealousy, so on and so on. And here's the other thing. One of the most common objections I hear about self-improvement is that it takes a load of time. It takes a lot of time to improve your body, to accumulate your knowledge, to actively and willingly expand your knowledge outside of areas that you're focused on. And you're absolutely right. But you know what else takes a lot of time? Doing nothing. Wasting your time. Watching mindless entertainment and playing video games. That also takes up a lot of your time. So here's the thing. Yes, it takes 12 years to become a doctor. Yes, it takes a year or two to build an athletic build. But it was going to take a year or two no matter what. 10 years was going to pass by whether you chose to become a doctor or not. Time goes by just the same. And that is a logical fallacy that often happens when people complain about not getting abs in 30 days. Not getting certain amount of likes on their posts in certain days because the days were going to pass by regardless you can either set yourself up to be in a position where you're more likely to receive that or do nothing at all so here's the real tragedy behind someone who chooses not to self-improve they're never gonna know what it's like to be on the other side at best they'll be left wondering and at worst they're going to be resentful and bitter about it second time is going to be moving regardless and they're going to be more susceptible to health issues, to their knowledge deteriorating, to cognitive issues compared to someone who's proactive. That is why they say even people who speak two or more languages, they're actually more resistant to Alzheimer's compared to someone who speaks one language because the person who's conscious about their diet, the person who's conscious about what they're learning, they're reading about, they are being as proactive as possible against the inevitabilities of life because you do get weaker as you age. Your cognitive functions are not as strong as you get older. The only way to at least mitigate it 
is by doing as much as you can to improve yourself both physically mentally and emotionally and that is the true tragedy of not doing the self-improvement of not doing the hard work because when you are on your deathbed you will look back at your life and have wondered to yourself what could have been if you had perhaps made a different choice with that being said do more think less